The results are in and e-commerce has won. The results are in and e-commerce is now officially past any other form of business. Those of you who built businesses around a brick and mortar model, I feel bad for you. You must pivot very quickly. Jeff Bezos made a bet in 1994 that people want to buy things without having to go somewhere. By the way, that's the simplest definition of e-commerce where the store comes to you. So you can sell a physical product, you can sell a virtual product, as law, it, what makes it e-commerce versus brick and mortar is where the customer has to go to buy. If you want a college education, for most colleges, you have to drive to campus. Well, not anymore. The world has changed. And no matter what happens with this current pandemic, I think the inflection point has happened. Those of you who are on the fence trying to decide if you should start a business, maybe you have a business, you're omni-channel, Drop everything, burn the boats, go all in for e-com. And I can't think of one industry. If you're in the restaurant industry, e-com. Be deliberate, do not have the only way people buy your food come into your restaurant. That's how you go bankrupt. And if this pandemic hadn't come, it would have still happened, just much slower. And I have empathy, I'm not saying, let's not, you know, I've been telling people for 10 years that you should bet that the writing on the wall is that you should bet on e-com. Some people thought it was a scam. I did online education. I said, you don't have to go to a campus to learn. The education can come to you right on your phone. And people say, oh, that's a scam. But I remembered what my second mentor, Alan Nation, told me. He said, Ty, if you have a business idea and you tell other people and they think it's a good idea, you're too late. All wealth is created by catching trends when the masses still think that it's an anomaly, that something's wrong with them. When Jeff Bezos started, uh, Amazon 1994, it grew, it grew, and then people started laughing at him. The tech bubble burst in the early 2000s, and people said, see, I told you this guy was an idiot. Who wants to buy books and food and clothing online? People always want to go to score. They want to try it on. They want to feel the vegetable in their hand. And some things, you still have grocery stores, you still have restaurants, you still have stores, but the economics have changed. And now, in the time we find ourselves now, imagine, you know, I just <coughs> bought a company called Dress Barn, did 740 million in revenue in 2019, last year, and I bought it. And my business partner, Dr. Mayor, and I had a choice. Do we want to bet on brick and mortar? They had 650 department stores. But we saw the writing on the wall. We said, people don't want to drive. And by the way, I'll share with you a theory that I have that it's always been this way, even in the 1800s. And we went all online. The way you acquire, you buy clothing now, it's a 57 year old brand with 10 million paying customers. We tell them you gotta buy online. And some of the customers didn't like it, but then when they started using it, I said, ah, this thing works. Why would I wanna drive to a store? And now does anybody wanna be in a store with a bunch of people? I wouldn't wanna be Simon Properties right now. I wouldn't wanna be Brookfield. Imagine owning malls right now. You think people, even if this pandemic instantly clears up, you think people are gonna, in mass, go in a closed room or a closed mall? Gonna go on Carnival Cruise Line? Gonna go to Disney? No, the world has shifted. And remember, it's not the strongest or the smartest who survive, it's the most adaptable to the environment in which they find themselves. My question to you is, are you gonna adapt quick and go all in on e-com? So, by the way, I'm on my, farm here so undisclosed location now I'm actually in, this is my little home gym on the farm I'm in I'm in Virginia Shenandoah Valley um my I have a company called Farmers Box I own different e-com companies it's just doing amazingly well now and, and because people want food delivered to their door I don't know how long it'll do well for but it's been interesting no matter what happens with Farmers Box the writing is on the wall a pandemic like this will probably come in the not too near future, and it will be a different kind. We have almost 8 billion people on the world, in the world. When my grandma was born, she's 102, she's born in 1918, February 1918. World War I was still going. World War I didn't end until November 11th at 11 a.m., 1918. World War I was going, she lived through World War II, she lived through the Depression, 1929, and she was German, so she lived through post-Treaty you know, of Versailles, Versailles, Depression that happened in Germany. 
She grew up eating carrots three times a day. She said, Ty, your skin turns orange. When she came to the United States on a boat in 1939, she said, I went to a restaurant and the first time I've ever seen somebody get two eggs. My grandma came from a different time. She's lived through pandemics and recessions. And I think they'll accelerate now because when she lived, there was only 1.2, one, around 1 to 1.2 billion people in the world. They didn't have the censuses, so nobody knows exactly. But the point being, uh, they're going to accelerate now. They will accelerate now. We have too many people, or maybe you don't think it's too many, but I have a farm here. This is, uh, I have combined about 450 acres. And you stick too many cows in one lot, parasites go up, disease goes up. Well, you got finite planet Earth. You got 8 billion, they project 10 billion people. So my point is that e-com will continue to win because people are going to continue to cocoon. There was a book, uh, a series of books by a lady named Faith Popcorn. She was a futurist. She trends in the 1990s. She wrote a book saying the future of the world is cocooning. People said, oh, what do you mean cocooning? And then all of a sudden, you know, we find ourselves in a world where we're ultimately cocooned. People quarantine at home. But the writing's been on the wall. You could have read one of those fake popcorn books, but it sounded crazy then. But as my mentor said, if you're doing something that sounds normal, you're too late. You want to get in when it still sounds crazy. So by the way, you're a little late to e-com. There's people now been doing it a decade. They got a lot more skill than you have, but better late than never. What's the old saying? Best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago or today. So plant your e-com bill a uh, business immediately. Now, some practical stuff. Some people are like, ah, oh, okay, that's great. The philosophy, how do I get started? I'll give you some tools that you can start right now. For, for a physical product, e-com, probably best bets use Shopify. We use it. I use a little more sophisticated platform for different e-com uh, companies that I have like Dress Barn, like Farmer's Box, where we sell a physical product. We use Shopify, but we have a highly modified version of it. So we're using more of the back end, but don't worry about that. You can launch with Shopify. I would say physical. Now, if you're going to sell digital products, now the array gets much more complex. Oh, by the way, well, let me keep going on this. Not to lose my train of thought. So I think in the in the if you're selling something virtual or di digital, now you have a tremendous amount of options. You can still use Shopify. Obviously, you're not shipping something. Um, there's a company called uh, what is it? Learnable, Teachable. We've used that for a time for a company I have called a Mentor Box. Now we move on our own custom platform. You can use WordPress. There's various plugins that are relatively easy. Click Funnels for a front end. Funnel building process is, is pretty strong, but uh, physical is easiest to start. Now, it's easiest to build on a software basis. So it's not necessarily um, <laughs> physical products can be relatively saturated. They could be a one person winner takes all. There's people that get good at e-com and just dominate whole categories. They dominate dry goods. They dominate supplements. And so it's harder for you to come in as a new entrant. But one of the things that I'll tell you, so number one, you know, physical product, easiest to pick your, easier to pick your software, um, in many ways harder to differentiate. Second, uh, if you're gonna do digital products, it's more confusing which shop software to use to start, but the beauty of it is you have no cogs. So cogs are called cost of goods. You know, when you look at a prop P and L, your profit and loss, right? You have your revenue at the top, and then you have this thing called cost of goods. It's above the line expenses. So they're expenses that are directly incurred every time you have one transaction, one sale. So if you're selling like Farmer's Box, we sell steaks, like a ribeye steak. Every time somebody spends let's say $100 on ribeye steak, we must send them frozen meat. So we incur a cost immediately. So physical products have higher cogs. If you're selling something digital, like an educational product, a consulting product, a tutoring product, um, then the cost of goods um, are, well, sometimes virtually non-existent. For example, I had a program called the 67 Steps. There were 67 principles that I learned from my mentors around how to build businesses, around um, how to, I don't know. <laughs> People define it different ways. For me, it was how to think. It was a structure of, 
a cognitive structure. And I built that and I charged $67, one dollar a lesson. And I had no cost of goods because it was video that people play. Maybe my cost of goods was a couple bucks. My main cost was customer acquisition on the marketing side, your CPA. But that's below the lines. That's not COGS generally, unless you're using maybe affiliates. So the advantage, I guess number three, of selling a physical product or the, it, it versus a virtual product, if you want to go all in on e-commerce, is that with a physical product, um, the, the con I just told you, you have cost of goods. The pros of physical products is people are less suspicious. You know, when I launched 67 steps, people were like, oh, this is like a scam and blah, blah, blah. Why would people pay for online education? You could just go get a Harvard MBA and spend 60 grand and go to the campus and learn. Now people are like, oh, Harvard's closed. So now everything's going to be like the 67 steps. <laughs> Bet on e-com early. And so, but the downside, so the downside of a virtual product, people are more suspicious. And the, the upside of a physical product is people, if you sell vacuum cleaners, people aren't like, oh, this is a scam, unless you don't ship them to them, but you won't stay in business long with chargebacks if you sell vacuum cleaners uh, and you don't deliver them, you know what I'm saying? So to me, you just weigh those two. For me, I build both. My solution is when I don't know what to do and there's two options, I just do both. That's almost always worked the best for me. Life is a heuristics, which is the science of decision-making. Heuristics is rarely binary. It's rarely one is better than the other. That's too pedantic, childlike thinking to go, okay, Todd, people ask me, Todd, what is the one book that's the best thing you can ever read about making money or being an entrepreneur? Well, I'm like, well, if fucking, <laughs> well, pardon my French, if making money was as simple as reading one book, everybody would be doing it and there would be no profit in it. First rule of economics, macroeconomics. No profit exists in the long term because new entrants enter into the game and competition goes up and margins shrink. So yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is if you're not sure what to do, physical product or virtual product, flip a coin, start with one and then roll the other one out after six to 12 months of stabilizing the first one. Do both, have your cake and eat it too. Um, now let's talk about some business ideas. Cause you might go, I need a business idea. Like what's a business idea that I could do right now? Well, I will tell you what, uh, what a guy I look up to who's at my house not too long ago, a guy named Tillman Fertitta, uh, very qualified to give advice. He's on the Forbes list. He owns the Houston Rockets. He, I think he's worth $5 billion. He told me, Ty, good rule of thumb. If you don't know what to sell, sell to the masses, not to the classes. What he means is don't sell luxury products to start with because in times like we live in today, that's the first thing people cut. You wouldn't want to be owning Louis Vuitton. Or you, <laughs> I would want to own Louis Vuitton, but if you look at Louis Vuitton's revenue now versus one year ago or even three months ago, boo, if you look at a luxury like going to Disney World and now the thing's closed, it's losing $40 million a day. So... Sell to the masses. Find the product that the masses use. Farmer's box, we sell frozen meat. A lot of people eat frozen meat. In fact, almost all meat you get is frozen at some point when you get a steak or a chicken. So that's what we sell and demand is relatively inelastic with, uh, with the times. Meaning demand doesn't change based on there being a quarantine. If anything, it gets better. People need food, about the same amount of food as they did three months ago before coronavirus. So first tip I'd give you when trying to decide, sell something that goes to the masses. Right now is not a great time to sell a high, high-end premium product. You're just gonna struggle. People are, people tighten up the belts right now, okay? Um, the second thing I would do, you want to sell something that you have a personal story around. In the world of personal branding and social media, it's like Kylie Jenner became the youngest billionaire because she sold makeup because she wore it all the time before she even started, thought of starting uh, Kylie's, you know, what is it? Kylie Cosmetics. She was putting on makeup. And she had a story around it and she could say, hey, I used to try to put on lipstick and they, it, this color sucked and I didn't like how it made me look. So I started getting people to design my own. And by the way, if you want to 
wear the same makeup that I have. So you need the story. Stories sell. Story, stories are persuasive. Stories go viral. There's a good book called Contagious. I think it's by Noah Berger. And, uh, you know, one of the things is stories go viral. So when you're trying to pick what e-commerce product you should build, ask yourself, what can I tell any sort of story? Maybe you were sick at some point and you took various supplements and you feel like that helped you. Don't make too many claims or the FDA will get mad at you and the FTC. But that's an example of things that work. Farmer's Box, I own farms before I built Farmer's Box so I could grow food for myself. Organic, know where it came from. And then I, I had too big of a farm and I was like, I can't eat all this food. And so I started giving away to my friends. And then my friends, it was too much for them. So I said, well, I'm going to put it on my website to my, to my followers. So a story led to a product. And the best businesses, the best businesses are often built around stories. You know, like even think about Elon Musk. Like he has this story where he believes that at some point planet Earth, <laughs> we will either blow ourselves off of it or whatever critical moment comes and we need to be on Mars or we need to be exploring space. So he's built this business around this core belief that he can tell a story around and it's very convincing and he does the same thing with tesla and the same thing with solar city great businesses are built around a core story that is personal to you especially now even more so you know jim watson built ibm in the 60s or 70s in a different time a time of the rise of corporations and this was less important but this is important for you today that you build more and more about stories. And lastly, in terms of some ideas, let's just brainstorm some. What could you do? Let's start with the physical product side. Okay, we don't want to sell to the, to sell to the masses, not the classes, personal story. It's hard for me to know your personal story, but just invent some. So uh, build a company that's all around selling lentils. Maybe you're vegan. Lentils, high protein. Tell a story. Maybe you went to the Middle East and you were, I think lentils came from, I don't know, the Nile River or Valley or maybe Iraq or Iran. And you're like, maybe you were in the military. You're, you're a veteran. And you're like, when I was in Iraq and Iran, I started eating a lot of lentils in lo local cafes. And I realized that lentils have, you know, all these health benefits. And so now I've built thelentilstore.com. And it's full of every variety of lentils. It's got videos, it's got recipes of me cooking it. And like, here you go. Here's my story, here's my family. I feed this to my kids. Build your business on Shopify. It's a business that's to the masses, not to the classes. You don't have to be a billionaire to eat lentils. And there you go, a simple niche business. By the way, I recommend for beginners, start with niche. If you've never built a business that's done over 10 million gross revenue annual start niche. If you've already done 10 million gross revenue, do not do niche, go broad. But this video is for beginners, not more advanced. What's another example? You wanna do a service side. So you're not building a Shopify site, you're building a ClickFunnels or a, or a you know, Kajabi or a WordPress or a, I can't remember if it's learnable, teachable, one of those. Here's one. Build a simple consulting course on how restaurants can add delivery services to their businesses. Restaurants owners would love to still be in business legally and one way they can legally be in business is what? Selling either at their, <coughs> some places it's even hard to sell curbside, but delivery. So build a simple consulting course, it's 97 bucks or 197. Let's say you have a background in logistics. Let's say you have a background in the restaurant business or you were an Uber driver or an Uber Eats driver. Well, now you got a story and you're selling to the masses, not the classes. A, a $97 consulting court, record 10 videos from start to finish. Maybe you have a case study. Maybe if you have a friend who owns a restaurant, do the consulting for them, work out the kinks, build that course. I know a guy <clears throat> on Kajabi, I think it was, he built a simple course. He had been an engineer on, on, on how to use Excel. Most people don't know how to use all the functions of Excel. He built a simple Excel program. It was like seven videos an hour each. And he made 250 grand a year with like 50, 60, 70% margins. So he's making six figures. He recorded the, the, the program once. That's all around you. Bet on e -com. 
bet on what I've talked about today because I can tell you I work with the biggest investment banks in the world. I do big and M&A, big M&A stuff. I just was almost was able to buy Forever 21, but uh, Simon Properties came in and some big guys came in, and but I was there. It's a 3.5 billion dollar company. I can pu I pulled back the curtain. I can tell you, I grew up with a mom, single mom. You know, dad was in prison. I I never thought that I would be seeing the real workings of and, and you know bidding on companies doing billions of dollars. But it's not as complicated as you think. They make the same mistakes. This, they have the same cognitive biases that cause error in entrepreneurs that I know that are making $10,000 a month. Never be intimidated. You can respect, but never be intimidated. The world is yours if you can catch the trends early, if you can build expertise. The good news for you is e-commerce e is not scary anymore. The bad news is you're a little bit late. So hurry up, hurry up. Time is of the essence. If this was helpful, Leave a like and just subscribe to my channel. I never say that on videos, but I've been noticing other people do, so I probably should. I'm not focused as much on social media anymore. I'm busy with businesses. We got businesses doing. It's a good, it's a good time to be alive. It's a scary time on some level, but um, scared money ain't ever made money. Don't be scared. Cautious. Analytical, yes. Fear, this is out of our hands. So uh, what's the cliche? Life gives you lemon, make lemonade. How about this, life gives you lemon, open a lemonade stand, it's even better.